Rena Shaw is a Republican political strategist and the CEO of the political consulting firm Relax Strategies. Thanks for coming back. It's good to see you. Is the government going to shut down this weekend or do you think House Speaker Kevin McCarthy will be able to pull off a last minute deal with his far right faction? In this moment, I believe we are barreling towards a shutdown. And I think that's what the far right extreme caucus wants. In fact, they've said as much. They would be fine with the shutdown of more than two to three days. Uh, in essence, what they're really trying to prove is that the speaker has no power. He hasn't got control of the caucus and he's not the right one to lead them. Now, that's a very, of course, extreme viewpoint. Uh, but it's one that we saw for being foreshadowed back in January when Kevin McCarthy got the speakership after 15 ballots. I think he spent many weeks up until now trying to show he has control of the caucus. And today, what you just heard is that he is trying to now pin it on his colleagues, saying there are people that do not agree with me, do not want to compromise with me and see us through to continuing to keep the government open. So he has also changed his line. Uh, but one thing he has not done that he could do by now and could have done and may still do is negotiate with Democrats to keep the government open. Yep. And GOP Senate Minority, excuse me, Leader Mitch McConnell, you know, he said a shutdown will hurt Republicans politically. What do you think? It would be egg on the face of Republicans. Back in 2013, so just 10 years ago, I remember when Republicans did a shutdown in order to essentially, well, it was around the time of trying to call for an Obamacare repeal. So they were trying to, again, stick it to Democrats, make it look like it's Democrats that are the problem. and They, they wouldn't be doing this if it weren't Democrats that were uh, creating out of control spending. And I've listened to enough Southern members, uh, those who are quite far right and uh, have feel that they have been sent to Washington with an edit to not spend anymore, to rein in government spending. And I get that. I'm also a fiscal conservative who believes in limited government from the federal level. And I do believe that local and state governments know what's right for us. But I know that a, a, a shutdown, a federal level shutdown, will hurt the constituents of these Southern members so badly that they will not be able to recover from it. This will look like it was the Republicans' fault. And so they're not thinking of the bigger picture. They're not thinking of the long game. And who's going to be hurt most? It's going to be people who grew up in rural communities like mine, southern West Virginia. It's going to be farmers who are the lifeline to food here in these United States. And so what we're really not factoring in is a wide-ranging impact. And again, I do think we are in, in we should stay put and, and, and expect a shutdown to happen uh, because right now it doesn't look like McCarthy can do anything to convince mm. the most extreme members of his caucus. To that point, how would you strategize this for Republicans, both in the capacity as a looming shutdown, you know, as you're saying, you're saying you think it's going to happen. What would you advise the party to do here? Well, it's really important to note in this moment that the Republican Party is very divided, Lauren. They are not one united faction in the House. Uh, though they may be led by Kevin McCarthy, they see themselves in two different camps. Uh, Congressman Matt Gates of Florida, a younger member, has repeatedly called for the Speaker to vacate the Speakership. That is his own Republican, McCarthy. So you've got people who, moderates, Republicans, who understand this makes us look bad, makes us look weak on the world stage. And then you've got, again, a burn it all down caucus. And they say they don't want to do that, but that's essentially what they're trying to do by, by holding the government hostage. They're not taking into account, again, the far reaching impact. So there's no good way to strategize this. This is very local. Each member is gonna have to answer. They're gonna have to find a creative way uh, to blame somebody and blaming Democrats cannot be the MO right now. And McCarthy is doing the right thing by saying, this is not a good call. Come with me, get united with me. And again, he is speaking to his own colleagues, a very different faction of his caucus. Rena, we got a minute left here. What do you think he's waiting for, McCarthy, that is, in regards to speaking and working with, especially those moderate Democrats, as you mentioned earlier in the conversation? What's he waiting for? There is no telling right now, Lauren. This is a very precarious situation for him. He knows that he could be, again, uh, removed from the speakership. I don't think the votes are fully there, but what one of the concessions he made in January was that all it takes is one vote to go to the floor to remove the speaker. Now, again, there's no um, successor in line to take over for McCarthy. Mm -hmm. If Gates think he thinks he's a viable option for a speaker, uh, that's quite funny. It's, a, it's It would be a very much a joke. So I would just say uh, right now I'm very, very disappointed because I don't see see many options for this speaker, despite revised bills that have been slashed over the weekend uh, that will go to a full floor vote. Um, I just don't know how else he does this. He should have had a short term continuing resolution uh, crafted and, and had that passed, but he knows he can't pass that because say he were to pass something like a, a short term funding bill, 
he also puts his speakership on the line with that. Mm. Republican political strategist Rena Shaw, thank you for joining me today. It's always a pleasure.